All right, guys. I told you I'd do a video on the pros and cons of Edison batteries. And, uh, I wasn't forgetting you guys this week. It's just other things. I haven't had time to sit down and make my list and do it until tonight. So, we're going to talk about this. Now, I'm going to go over the pros to start with. The biggest pro about them that I can think of is they will last you the rest of your life if you take care of them. Now, they are cheaper in the long run as long as you plan on using them for four, four to five decades. They're more environmentally friendly over lead acid. You know, lead acid batteries cause a lot of pollution and they are extremely environmentally hard to recycle. It's, you know, it's quite a process to recycle the acid. It's not so much the lead plates, it's the acid you recycle because of the lead in the acid. Now, one big advantage to them is they can be discharged 80%. Versus a, a lead acid battery, you can only take it down to 30% without really hurting it. And that may vary on manufacturer, but in general. You can overcharge an Edison, and they don't mind it. They actually enjoy a good overcharge quite often. I overcharge mine all the time. They do not freeze. As long as you've got a good mixture of KOH in them, I've had them sitting out in a shed all went along 20, 30 below weather, they didn't freeze. They could sit for years or lower next to no charge, and they'll take a charge and come right back to life. They're rebuildable. In other words, you can take them apart if you're mechanically inclined enough, clean the plates. And so I'm put them back together with new KOH and bring back a cell that's not performing well or it seems dead. Not going to guarantee that every single one of them out there is rebuildable, depending on the extent of damage, but most of the time they can be rebuilt. So now we're going to get into the cons. They're very expensive. I mean, really, if you went out and bought a brand new set versus buying the same amount of amp hours in lead acid, you're probably looking at a good four or five decades, you know, if you don't count inflation, of trying to be, beat the price of just buying lead acids. Now, unless you're like me, I, I got a great deal on mine. They're old, but they still work good. You know, you look around, there's some old ones out there. Other guys have found them. And you can really make all good. They're very poor efficiency compared to lead acid. I only get about 40% of what I put into mine back out of them. And that's if I use it immediately. Like within the next day or two. They, uh, so basically what I'm saying is. If you put 100 amps in it for an hour, you got 100 amp hours, right? Wrong. I get about 40 amp hours of usable power out of 100 amps. So that's a big drawback. Lead acid is definitely more efficient. Um, it, it, I think it depends on what type of lead acid batteries you're using as to where that efficiency actually lies. Um, let's see, what's the next thing I got on my list? Inverters, that's a big problem with Edison's. There are companies out there that are waking up to this because more people are running Edison's. But it typically your Edison's run a higher voltage and it doesn't always work well with the inverter. I have problems with my inverter. We actually end up shutting the solar panels down because we can't use enough power on the inverter to keep the keep those panels down enough and 
and they'll charge the batteries and they'll creep up over the uh, 15 and a half volts that the inverter will accept very quickly. I mean, if it's a somewhat cloudy day, not a problem. But if you get a good sunny, clear day, forget it. Um, there's less choices in charge controllers with Edison's. I mean, this is getting better. But um, for a long time, Trace and Xantrax were about the only ones that made a charge controller that would actually had a setting for uh, Edison's. I guess the Midnight Classics will do it now, and uh, there's a few others. So that, that is changing, but it is a drawback. You are limited on your choices there. You know, especially if you want a good uh, PWM or um, charge controller. Um, Edison's cannot deliver the high amperage that lead acids do. I don't care what they try to tell you. If you're going to try to run Edison's with a really big inverter, you better be going up some wicked high voltage because you're not going to do it on 12 volts. They just will not give up that amount of amps at once. Like, even on my bank, it's probably got more amp hours than the battery in my pickup. My bank would never start my pickup. It would never give up that amount of amps at once. And they do have a higher rate of self-discharge versus lead-acid batteries. And this can sometimes be a, a major, major problem, especially when you have three, four sunny days, you get your batteries charged up, and then you have no real sun, no wind or anything, nothing charging them to speak of, you know, for the next four or five days, you do lose power to self-discharge. Now, it's not a huge amount, but it is more than lead-acid batteries. So with that all said, I mean, that pretty much sums up. There may be more facts out there that, you know, I, I mean, if I sat here and really spent days looking at things and comparing notes, and I probably could come up with even more stuff. This is how I view it. If you're in your 20s and you're going off grid, or maybe even in your 30s, you're going to go off grid and you want a set of batteries you, you can buy once and never have to buy any more batteries by all means I would recommend Edison's um, if if you're getting to be older like I am unless you can find some for a good deal on used ones I don't know I don't know if I went to buy brand new ones right now. I mean, let's face it, what do I got left? 25, 30 years. So I don't know as if they would pay off versus just buying a good forklift battery brand new. I mean, you can buy a brand new forklift battery and get a lot more amp hours for 2,500, 3 grand and not have the problems with charge controllers and inverters so you know um, that's where my advice would lie on that I mean by all means I, I love the ones I got and uh, but if I was going to replace them I probably would buy a forklift battery just because at my age you know it wouldn't make sense unless I just became a multi-millionaire and didn't care. Or, you know, money was, like, disposable to me, then that would be different. But being somebody that has to think about money and, uh, you know, where things are going to go and what's the best bang for my buck, I wouldn't. So, you know, hopefully that answers some of you guys' questions. Feel free to, you know... Write in the comments um, any questions you got. 
Any uh, remarks? I mean, I, I don't want to hear about, you know, Telsa batteries better, saltwater batteries better. That's not what this video is about. This is about the pros and cons of an Edison battery versus lead acid. You know, I don't know anything about these other type batteries. I haven't played with them. I've read very little on them, and I don't want to get into it. That's a video somebody else can do. So hopefully it helps you guys out. Till next time.